Of all the essential nutrients required in the human diet, one of the nutrients most likely to be deficient is the mineral magnesium. I did a previous video on magnesium. I'll post the link under this video where I covered a lot of the details about magnesium. But I wanted to uh, discuss in this video a kind of unpublished study I just came across I found rather interesting uh, re regarding the use of bathing in Epsom salts to increase magnesium. Full disclosure, this study was, I believe it was sponsored by an organization that promotes Epsom salts. So again, you know, you have to keep that in mind, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean, it doesn't uh, mean that the uh, results of the study are not valid. Uh, it's actually a fairly decent study. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you. I'm going to read it right off the study, uh, rather than you know come up. I'm just going to read right off the study what they found. But I should point out that um, uh, if you're on any kind of restricted calorie diet, such as a low carbohydrate or a ketogenic diet, there's a high likelihood that you're not you're not ingesting enough magnesium. The requirement for men is 420 milligrams a day. For women, it's about 320, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is not a lot of magnesium, but uh, if you're not eating these foods, you won't be getting it. And as I said, it seems like about 80% of people do not meet even the minimal daily requirements for magnesium. So it's clearly a problem. Uh, I, you know, refer to my magnesium vi uh, video for more facts about video, uh, magnesium. But I will say magnesium activates over 300 enzymes. And it's involved in 80% of the enzymatic reactions in the human body. The importance of magnesium cannot be overstated. It's very important if you're involved in any kind of fitness or bodybuilding activity. It's needed for the utilization of protein. If you do want to get magnesium strictly from foods, you, you have to. For, uh, these are the foods you need to eat. Leafy greens is, is, a, is a fairly uh, good source, particularly spinach. One cup of spinach provides 157 milligrams of magnesium, which is not a bad amount, you know, considering that the uh, the, the uh, suggested daily requirement is 420 milligrams. Dark chocolate contains magnesium. Uh, avocados contain small amounts, but decent amounts of magnesium. Nuts, legumes such as beans, peas, and soybeans and seeds such as flax and pumpkin, whole grains such as buckwheat, these contain magnesium. Uh, so anyway, uh, and fatty fish such as salmon, uh, mackerel, halibut, they contain some magnesium. But again, you'd have to eat a pretty good variety of all these foods to reach that 420 uh, uh, milligram uh, mark. If you take supplemental magnesium, by the way, you don't want to take more than 200 milligrams at a time because any more than that has a uh, laxative effect. You might have heard of a, uh, of a drug or a pharmaceutical called milk of magnesia. This is a form of magnesia used to treat constipation. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a other form of magnesium citrate is a good form of magnesium. But again, taken in large amounts, you better be near a bathroom, is all I could say. If you, uh, They use magnesium citrate to actually clean out people before a colonoscopy. That gives you an idea of how it works. But getting back to this study, this study was done by researchers at the um, at the School of Biosciences, the University of Birmingham. Uh, the subjects were recruited from the staff of the School of the Biosciences. And, and, and the subjects uh, involved 19, 19 subjects, 10 male, 9 female, uh, all were in good health and, and not on any current medication. No subjects smoked more than five cigarettes a day or drank more than two units of alcohol, and their ages ranged from 24 to 64 years. After initial pilot studies, all volunteers took baths with a temperature of 50 to 55 degrees centigrade, and they stayed in the bath for 10, 12 minutes. They added varying amounts of magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salts, to the bath before entry ensured that the salts were completely in solution. In other words, the... Um, Epsom salt was kind of dissolved in the water before they got in the bath. Um, blood samples were taken before the first bath, at two hours after the first bath, and at two hours after the seventh consecutive bath. Baths were taken daily at the same time for seven days for the experiment. Urine samples were collected before the first bath, and then two hours after the first bath, and, and all, of, all of the subsequent baths. Uh, the magnesium levels in the... Okay, here's the results. The magnesium levels in the blood are very tightly controlled, the uh, researchers point out. 
Of the 19 subjects, all except three showed a rise in magnesium concentrations in plasma, though this was small in some cases. The values before the first, well, I'm not going to list the values. That's not really important, but uh, let me get to this other part here. Uh, continu continuation of bathing for seven days and all except two individuals gave a rise, a, a significant rise of magnesium in the blood. Prolonged soaking in uh, Epsom salts therefore increases blood magnesium concentrations. Um, let's see. Th those individuals where blood magnesium levels were not increased had correspondingly large increases in urinary magnesium, showing that the magnesium ions had crossed the skin barrier and had been excreted in the kidney, presumably, presumably because the blood levels were already optimal. In other words, the people that were uh, getting optimal amounts of magnesium in the diet tended to uh, not show increased plasma levels because the extra pl uh, magnesium was excreted out. But uh, these were only like two or three people, which gives you an idea. Two or three people out of 19 people had uh, uh, normal magnesium levels. This kind of uh, reflects uh, the, the world population uh, uh, in the sense that most people do not just ingest enough magnesium from their diets. Males had slightly higher levels of blood magnesium than females. Females had, had higher pl plasma sulfate level than males, although these differences were not significant. The mean levels of both magnesium and sulfate were almost identical for males and females after bathing. Uh, now, what, as far as the optimal levels, uh, all individuals showed a rise in plasma magnesium and sulfate at a level of 1% uh, Epsom salts in the water. This equates to 1 gram or 600 milligrams of Epsom salts. Uh, however, blah, 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 blah. at the 600 gram bath level, volunteers complained that the water felt soapy. <laughs> the values obtained suggest that most people would find maximal benefit by bathing two to three times a week using 500 to 600 grams Epsom salts each time. That's one to two cups of Epsom, of Epsom salt added to a, a bath. No volunteers complained of any adverse effects, even at magnesium sulfate levels of 2.5%. Possible effects on the kidneys were tested. There was, uh, there was no uh, adverse effects on kidney function. Um, the, study, the study experiments, hold on. The study experiments, uh, oh, they, they tested it on, on skin uh, using isolated bits of skin, and they found that um, the magnesium sulfate did penetrate the skin. Uh, which kind of underscored the fact that the Epsom salts were able to penetrate the skin barrier uh, and, and provide magnesium in the blood. Uh, Epsom salts dosage, if bathing is not available. Interestingly, both volunteers who were six, oh, the two of the volunteers who were over 60 commented without prompting that rheumatic pains had disappeared. In other words, joint pains seem to be relieved by taking these Epsom salt baths, and Epsom salt baths have been suggested as a means of relieving muscle and joint pain for who knows how many years? This is like a like a like a, a uh, what is it called? A traditional remedy, and now we know that uh, the uh, magnesium content of Epsom salts actually does get into the blood. And the conclusion was bathing in Epsom salts is a safe and easy way to increase sulfate and magnesium levels in the body. So I, I just wanted to do this little short video to show you that this is another way uh, of obtaining magnesium. Uh, Eps I have taken Epsom salt baths, uh, not necessarily to get more magnesium, but I can tell you that they're very relaxing. Uh, they have no adverse effects. And, uh, you know, if you're training hard, they'll probably help relieve a little muscle soreness. And it's a good idea. You know, according to this study, two to three, three times a week, one to two cups of Epsom salt in the water. Let that, you know, kind of swish the water around to let the, uh, the Epsom salts dissolve. And uh, again, this is a, uh, a fairly easy way to get additional magnesium in your body besides eating the foods that I mentioned. Uh, if you want to take supplemental magnesium, the two types I recommend are magnesium citrate, not overdoing it, like I said earlier, because it'll cause, uh, it'll, it'll cause a, you know, a laxative effect. And, uh, magne and uh, magnesium glycinate is, a, uh, is another great form of magnesium. That's an amino acid uh, chelate, they call that. Uh, there's a couple of new uh, magnesium supplements. These are uh, slow-release magnesium where you would take uh, about four tablets and it's released for hours over the body. Uh, they're very expensive and I'm not sure there's any real advantage to uh, taking using these slow-release supplements over 
standard magnesium in food or standard good magnesium supplements like the magnesium glycinate. Uh, these uh, these slow release forms are, are average close to fifty dollars a bottle, and they don't even last three weeks. So I'm going to stick with myself with magnesium glycinate. I do take extra magnesium because uh, I, I do exercise. Magnesium is a great anti-stress mineral. I take two forms of magnesium. I take magnesium glycinate. I only use 200 milligrams a day of that. Again, this is below the laxative effect. Uh, so I get the benefits of magnesium. I get uh, maximum absorption of the magnesium without any side effects. And the other type of magnesium I use is unfortunately also a fairly expensive form. It's called magnesium threonate. Threonate is a metabolite of vitamin C. And, uh, and uh, experiments uh, or studies published by researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology found that magnesium 3 and 8 is probably the only form of magnesium that could penetra penetrate the brain blood-brain barrier and get in the brain. In the brain, it has a number of beneficial effects on brain function, including the development of new dendrites and the maintenance of brain synapses, that is the um, connections between neurons. Uh, so it might uh, aid in helping to maintain good cognition or thinking ability, improve memory, and maybe possibly even help prevent degenerative brain diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Because remember, magnesium, again, is involved in 80% of all enzymatic reactions in the body, including that, that that occurs in the brain. So don't ignore magnesium. And, you know, Epsom salts are very, very inexpensive if you want to try this. They're great. I mean, it's very relaxing. It's a good way to get a little extra magnesium in your body. If you want further information about nutrition, supplements, exercise science, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, anti-aging research, the best techniques to help you lose body fat, the ones that really work, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. 40 to 50 pages every month. It's more like a monthly ebook. I shouldn't have called it a newsletter because most newsletters I want to do pages of pure crap. They're, they're useless. They're like junk mail. My newsletter is hardly that. It's it's a it's it's like um it's like taking a nutrition course, and I cover subjects that you won't find on the typical uh, nonsensical uh, so-called science blogs and and science sites where they quote mouse studies and they act like they're applicable for the humans. I mean, I can't believe the crap I see online related to nutrition and exercise. That's one of the reasons I, I, I came out with this newsletter, because I wanted to print evidence-based truth that's easily understood. And that's an important point because there's other digital publications that are not only three times more expensive than my newsletter, but also are written in medical East scientific jargon, which is very hard to understand unless you have an advanced degree. And, and you won't get anything out of these newsletters because they don't communicate. They're written by academics. Some of these young guys that just graduated, they, did, they never learned how to write for, for the public. They only know how to write dissertations like their PhD, and they can't understand that they have to communicate with the public. <clears throat> I have 42 years of writing experience. I've had over 6,000 articles published over the years. So I know how to write. I can guarantee that. <coughs> And anybody, no matter what your level of education or knowledge, you will learn something from reading Applied Metabolics. That's www.appliedmetabolics.com. For every person that subscribes, I will also send you an invitation to join my private Facebook page for Applied Metabolics, where I post additional very interesting science and nutrition studies. I answer questions from the subscribers. That private Facebook page is only available to subscribers of, of Applied Metabolics. I also uh, uh, answer short questions submitted to me by subscribers. Uh, I have an email, email portal on my uh, Applied Metabolic site, but I only answer questions from subscribers because I consider that a benefit or an extra benefit of subscribing. I appreciate the support uh, the subscribers offer by their subscription, so I will only answer questions submitted by subscribers. Uh, if you want uh, information from me and you're not a subscriber, I do offer consults, but that also comes with a fee. I don't have time to just answer everybody's question, and nobody else does, quite frankly. Anybody with any knowledge, I should say. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, oh, let me repeat the website again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Subscribe today. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, I know I say this in every video, I'll say it again and again. Get Go to local shelter. 
get a dog. I mean, these dogs are just are craving for affection. They and they're the best friends, the most loyal animals. Uh, you know, I, I I I can't say good enough good things about dogs. I, I love them. I mean, I've, I I didn't have them for many years. I got my first dog, who was a stray dog, about 21 years ago, and I I I've come to the point where I can't imagine not having a dog. They're that great. So and and. Uh, so go to your local shelter, adopt a dog, take care.